Slow motion, also known as slow-mo, is a post-production effect used to give the illusion of time slowing down. Austrian priest and physicist August Musker is credited with its invention in the early 20th century and it's since been used in countless films. The effect in itself is extremely versatile, allowing filmmakers to capture fast-moving action that's not only easy for audiences to follow, but dramatic, elegant and often humorous. So how does it work? Well, slow motion is a function of the capture frame rate of the video you've shot versus the playback frame rate of your edit. So let's break that down. Let's say you shoot a video in 24 frames per second. That means that for every second of video you're shooting, you're effectively capturing 24 individual images. When played back in video form, these frames play back really, really fast over the course of a second and give us the illusion of movement. So let's say this video here is shot in 24 frames per second. If I were to edit it on a timeline that's set to the same playback frame rate to how the footage was captured, so in this case 24 frames per second, the video will have a duration and speed of action that matches real life. 24 frames played back in one second. If the same scene was shot at 48 frames per second, double what we had for our original clip, when I drag it into LumaFusion, the app will take what it needs from the footage in order to fill the frames on the timeline. So in this case, 24 frames from the video as it only needs half of what was captured to play the video smoothly. However, because it's shot with double the frame rate, if we wanted to, we can cut the speed of this clip in half, doubling its duration on the timeline, giving it a slow-mo effect. This is because our 48 frames per second video has captured twice the number of frames of that on the timeline, so we'll happily spread out and fill double the amount of frames. This clip is now two seconds in length. The higher the frames per second rate of your video, the slower the action can play back smoothly. For example, if your smartphone has a slow-mo option in the camera like this, just take a look at your camera settings. Here on my iPhone in the settings menu, if I was to shoot in slow-mo, you can see the smartphone captures footage in 240 frames per second. So if the same clip was edited on my 24 frames per second timeline, the duration of the clip in playback could, if I wanted it to, play back smoothly 10 times slower than if it was shot in 24 frames per second. There's more footage captured to play back with. So let's actually slow a clip down in LumaFusion and look at how you do it. So I'm going to grab a clip from the media library here and bring it down onto the timeline. This is a clip shot at 240 frames per second and I'm entering it into a timeline set to a playback speed of 30 frames per second. When I drag this to the timeline, LumaFusion will automatically pull the frames it needs from my video in order to play back this clip smoothly at 30 frames per second. In this case, the editor will use every eighth frame of my video for LumaFusion to play it back at a normal speed. So to slow-mo this clip, I'm going to double tap and open the speed and reverse editor. Here you can see I can adjust the speed of a video clip so it plays faster or slower. Now, if you have a clip that was shot at a higher frame rate than the current frame rate of your project, like this one, you'll see a small white vertical line on the speed control slider. This tick is really important as it represents the slowest speed you can go, bearing in mind the native frame rate of the clip, without duplicating any frames to create the slow motion effect. If you go lower than this, you risk your footage getting that choppy, unprofessional look because basically the app will have to duplicate frames of your clip to fill the frames on the timeline. So let's slow this clip all the way down to the white line here to one eighth of the speed it is on my timeline at the moment. Because this is shot in 240 frames per second, at this speed now, every frame in the video will be played on the timeline. What's great is that if you want to have your clip change speed partway through, the app will automatically match cut your footage for a smoother transition between speeds. So let's say I want this clip to play faster for the second half, but quite slow at the beginning. I simply split the clip using the scissors icon at the point where I want to change speeds and adjust the other half of the clip to a faster speed like this. The timeline will automatically calculate and create a match at the points where the speed changes, if it's possible with the amount of media available and the chosen speed.
So that's slow motion, a fun effect you can get started with in your projects today. Now, as you will have gathered throughout that tutorial, it's really, really important to think in advance about the slow motion effects you're gonna be using in LumaFusion. So way back in time, before you've even started filming your projects, think about the frame rates you're going to need to film in in order to edit in slow motion on the LumaFusion timeline. If you have any questions at all, please do let us know in the comments below. And of course, we'd love to see your work, so tag those along as well. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next week for more content from the Lumatouch Academy.